Hello everyone, I'm Mark from Digital Home Systems and welcome to a hopefully informative little presentation for you. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the second most popular thing when it comes to the actual home automation, which is specifically sensor inputs. So specifically for this instance is your standard multi-sensors or motion sensors, depending on what need you for, have for them. So firstly, when we essentially start off, a little bit of backstory, we actually start off with your good old Fabaro multi-sensor. Comes with a, quite a few options for it. Motion sensors, of course, temperature sensor, lux, and then two other sensors that are not really commonly used, especially here in Australia, the size, what is it, seismometer uh, that actually popped up during the earthquake a couple of months ago in Victoria, and as well as Xelromno, which essentially determines whether or not it's full and so and so and so. Um, we generally found that a couple of people didn't really need all the bells and whistles, um, and as such, uh, they saw the actual price tag for it as completely unnecessary because they didn't actually need all the other little functions for it. So we did a bit of field research and a bit of testing. We ended up finding the Z-Waves Aldi sensor. So as you can see, these guys are pretty much near. I didn't do a look apart from some patching on the sides of it as well as that. What we found for it is unlike having all of the, you know, the, all the extras inside the Fubara multi-sensor, the Z-Wave multi-sensor only has two options for it. it has your motion sensor and then it also has a lux sensor inside of it as well so for all intents and purposes uh these are pretty much identical looks after minor adjustments and essentially both load into a bar controller without any source of issues um however we then actually had people asking us whether or not they could recess these uh, as such they didn't want them poking on the walls so had to drill holes in their walls in order to fit them but they had to fix it late dates so once again, we went to the drawing board and had a look around. And we ended up finding a way, uh, essentially somebody who was willing to make us plastic molds for mounting systems. So they're made up of three very simple material, simple parts. First one is your spring loaded catches on the bottom in order to actually retain some level of tension. You then you got your actual main base plate for it as well, as well as your attachable front plate, as obviously seen. So the two. Devices for the Fabara as well as the Z-Wave actually come with their own personal mounts form. You can simply just remove the mounts for the purposes of this and insert them into your holder. They fit both of them completely fine and they're a very snug fit. Uh, as such, uh, once you have actually tightened on the front plate for it, you actually are unable to move them, which is a good thing because the last thing you need is for someone that's essentially mounted it to say off the side, looking one direction, Last thing you need is for that to actually rotate back around when it's facing front deck. As such, you can simply remove it. You can see that it sometimes comes off and you can trade out current to either of them. So, for example, move that to the side, take off the bottom plate, which has their own fixings for it, of course, put it in the holder, which like previously, and also tighten it on. And that stays in place. Now, there's a slight difference between the two of them as well uh, when it actually comes to the actual general makeup of the device itself. Um, they both use CR123A batteries, so they're very interchangeable. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, so it's entire, entirely possible to, even if you do have Fubaro, um, Fubaro door window sensors throughout your household, you can actually still use uh, your essentially standard uh, Z-Waves without any issues either. The main difference between the two of them is if you actually remove the back plate from the Z-Wave multi-sensor, you can see there's actually two screw fixtures inside of it. So I'll move that aside, as you can see, two little screws for it. Now you can actually remove those screws using a flat head instead of a Phillips head. You can actually remove this front plate. As you can see, that's actually the internals of the sensor itself. And then you actually have a fresh front plate. You can actually, using a little bit of electrical tape, actually turn this into a cat's eye lens, uh, essentially enabling you to cut off a certain area that you don't actually need to detect. Um, sort of allows mounting in certain places where, as an example, blinds will occasionally blow when air conditioners run. As such, you can get rid of false positives for that. Now, coming to actually mounting these devices themselves. So, after you've actually included your device into your Fubaro system, what you can just go and do is actually drill yourself out a hole. Uh, the recommended diameter for the hole is 
uh, centimeters, so 65 mil. And essentially all you have to do is just align your little tags on the back of these, the spring loaded ones, as you can see, simply just align them straight up, put one in the hole first, and assign the other one up there, and you simply just push it up until it fits nice and snug. If you realize your positioning is actually incorrect for it, much like printing for any other sort of map, simply just get a fix on the side of them, pull straight down, and you'll be able to attach it. So as an example, if you didn't actually want that or your positioning was bad, simply just take up your front case for it, rotate it back to your liking, reattach it. Once again, hold the pins back up. And it will affix into place. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in today's presentation, uh, feel free to contact me at mark at dhsys.com.au. For any other sort of general inquiries, feel free to contact office at dhsys.com.au. Thank you.